A few years ago, thanks to COVID-19 lockdown, my partner and I were both working from home in a little one-bedroom apartment, and we had saved up enough money to finally buy a house, uh, but it had to be way out in the suburbs because that's all we could afford. And at first, I didn't love the idea of moving to a place that wasn't a walkable urban environment, but... One of the big upsides I learned was that there was wildlife that I didn't get to see in the city. So we have coyotes and lizards and turkeys and my favorite non-human neighbor, great horned owls. They make this beautiful hoot that's equal parts spooky and soothing. But I also learned from my human neighbors that there are a few animals they'd prefer go away, with the most annoying being gophers. Gophers wreak havoc through our yards here. They eat anything we plant, and they leave this mess of holes and tunnels. And in talking to my neighbors about it, I learned that many of them chose to deal with this problem by hiring companies to come out and poison the gophers. Here's the problem. You know what great horned owls eat? Gophers, you know what great horned owls do not have? Poison control centers. According to Audubon, 81% of great horned owls studied in New York State contained rodenticides. The more poisoned rodents they eat, the more the poison builds up in their system until they inevitably die. So by poisoning the gophers, my neighbors were poisoning the gophers' main predators, unintentionally making the gopher problem worse for all of us, not to mention depriving us of those cool hoots at night. I'm thinking of the unintentional effects that happen when we screw with our ecosystem, thanks to a pair of studies that caught my eye recently. As my $5 plus Patreon supporters know, uh, because I discussed it in a recent newsletter, the first of these was published in Science last month, and it linked the decline in the bat population in the United States with an increase in deaths in babies, not bat babies human babies. That's right. I know it's spooky season and bats are a standard part of our scary decorations, but it turns out that bats actually save human lives. A.L. Frank, an assistant professor at the Harris School of Public Policy at the University of Chicago, is an environmental economist. And returning viewers already know how I feel about most economists, but for the record, yeah, I really wish we didn't have to put a monetary value on things that are unequivocally beneficial to humanity. But as he pointed out in this interview with PBS NewsHour in 2021, if we don't inform those policy discussions about what is the value of a species, we're essentially implicitly assuming a value of zero. So Frank set out to examine the economic impact of white nose syndrome, which is a fungal infection that bats in the United States and Canada started getting in the early 2000s probably thanks to humans accidentally tracking it into their caves on our shoes and clothing. The fungus causes the bats to wake up during hibernation in the winter when there's no food around, which leads to about 70% of infected bats starving or freezing to death. In less than two decades, millions of bats have been killed, some of which are endangered species. And since bats only have one pup at a time, experts estimate it's going to take something like 500 years for the population to recover. So how does this affect humans? Well, bats are voracious hunters of insects, and as they disappeared, farmers had to come up with new ways to protect their crops from this sudden surge of damaging bugs. Frank found that farmers tended to increase their use of pesticides by more than 30% following the bat's population decline. He then overlaid this increase in pesticide usage on a county level with the rate of infant deaths from internal causes, meaning causes other than accidents or homicides. And he found an increase of about 8% on average in counties with white nose syndrome compared to counties without it. He also found that farmers in areas with white nose syndrome lost about $27 billion, which is important because unlike the death of infants, that is a figure that might encourage big industry to actually give a shit about this. 
I wrote in my newsletter that I found the study really interesting, but I wasn't sure if I was going to do a video about it. And I pulled the trigger today because I saw that Frank has just published another study, this time in the October issue of American Economic Review, and this time about vultures. When the population of vultures goes down, human mortality goes up. In India back in the mid-1990s, the population of vultures suddenly dropped by a stunning 95%, and nobody could figure out why. It took two decades for researchers to finally figure out that the cause was the vultures eating livestock carcasses that contain a common painkiller called diclofenac. Diclofenac was introduced in the mid-1970s for managing pain in humans, but in the 90s, the patent on the original brand expired and cheap generic versions flooded the market. This lowered the cost to the point where livestock farmers were able to buy it and use it on their animals. Unbeknownst to them, vultures cannot process that drug, and thus they would die of kidney failure within weeks of eating a carcass that had been treated with it. This became a serious issue because vultures were important sanitation workers who farmers relied upon to clear carcasses quickly. Now, those carcasses were left to rot on the outskirts of towns, which risked spreading diseases. Sure enough, Frank found that in places where the vulture population collapsed, all-cause human death rates increased by more than 4%, plus there was a significant increase in feral dog populations and rabies, and lower water quality. So how's that for a butterfly effect? Usually when a pharmaceutical company's patent expires, human lives are saved because more people can afford to get the drug in question. In this case, it may have had the opposite effect. It's all a bit depressing, but the upshot is that the more we know about these downstream effects of our environmental fuckery, the more hope we have of actually fixing things. As individuals, you know, we can plant native gardens, set up bat boxes, owl houses, we can avoid using harmful pesticides, and we can let our representatives know that we want legislation to force corporations to take action. Maybe tell them how many infants are dying. You know what? No, scratch that. Probably better to lead with how many billions of dollars people are losing. As for me, I've shared with my neighbors the information about how poisons work their way through gophers up through the ecosystem and have the opposite of the intended effect. And I think it's actually working. Recently, one neighbor excitedly shared that she had bought something called a gopher hawk. And I thought that must be, you know, like a fake hawk to scare gophers away. But no, it turns out it's a spring-loaded spike that you you set up in the gopher hole. And when they wiggle around, it fires straight into their tiny little gopher faces. Hers went off almost immediately. And she pulled the poor impaled fella out of his hole and flung him into the street where a coyote made off with him within the hour. I got to say, it does solve the problem in the best way possible. You know, it's quick. It's relatively painless. There's no poisons and the local wildlife gets an easy snack. But yeah, I think I'm just going to keep tossing Indy's turds down the holes in the hope the gophers smell the predator (laughs) and go over to my neighbor's yard. I mean, I can't even bring myself to cook a turkey for friends for Thanksgiving. I'm not ready to serve gopher tartar shish kebabs to my furry and feathery neighbors. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you loved the video, please subscribe. And if you think the world could use more videos like this and you happen to have a few bucks laying around, head to patreon.com slash Rebecca and join an awesome community of nerds like the people whose names you see on the screen right now. Thanks.